right, guys, I know I promised you a video about the linebackers for Florida State, uh, and that's coming, don't worry. But first, I want to talk about uh, the Florida State fall practice as of their first week, which started last Tuesday. Uh, I wanted to get that in since I talked about the Alabama fall practice yesterday, so I figured I might as well just continue that theme and do the Florida State practice today. So uh, I did a little research, and I'm going to just talk about some of the things uh, that are going on for Florida State practice. I'm a Florida State fan to follow the team closely. They already know this. I'm just going to offer uh, some of my thoughts on it and also inform some of my fellow Alabama fans who don't keep up with Florida State as much. So, first of all, Jimbo Fisher, um, he announced and stated to the media that Rick Leonard will start at left tackle. Um, at least he's getting to start there for the first team reps in fall practice uh, so far. Uh, I know that he must have beat out Josh Ball or Josh Ball was not playing as well, who knows. But either way, Josh Ball is now second team left tackle. And here's the interesting thing. Um, this is really interesting to me. I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Jimbo Fisher announced that Brock Rubel will play right tackle when he was also saying that Rick Leonard will play left tackle. But the interesting thing is that throughout the first week of practice, Brock Rubel has actually been second team right tackle. And uh, Derek Kelly has actually been with the first team, getting first team reps at right tackle. So the tackles have been Rick Leonard, who was a converted defensive lineman and moved the offensive line and is now excelling, apparently, and Derrick Kelly. I thought that was very interesting. So um, he announced Rubel, but I'm assuming Kelly must be outplaying him. One thing, though, is uh, apparently, according to some sources, Derrick Kelly has come back and he's improved his body condition a lot um, in terms of like getting stronger, his hands are stronger, his body's stronger, his body's harder, it's not as, um, I guess, like fluffy, or he doesn't have as much, you know, like soft weight on him now. He seems to be more hardy, and that may con be a contributor to why he is having more success right now. Uh, now, moving on from that, uh, the interior of the offensive line will be Landon Dickerson, Alec Everly, and Cole Minshew. And so it seems uh, they moved Dickerson from right guard to left guard, probably to help out Rick Leonard over there on the left side. And Everly will be starting center, of course. He's recovered from his injury, obviously. And Babyon Johnson, the redshirt freshman, he will be second team center. And uh, Cole Minshew will be the right guard. So if you look at it across, it's Rick Leonard, Landon, Dick Landon Dickerson, Alec Everly, Cole Minshew, and uh, Derrick Kelly at the right tackle spot. So that's interesting. I, I like seeing what the offensive line has working with. So it'll be cool to see, you know, will these guys be able to keep those spots or will some guys start pushing toward the end of fall practice? We'll find out. Florida State fans, what do you think about Derrick Kelly being the starter at right tackle? Uh, do you have confidence in him? Um, I do know he started, um, was it right tackle two years ago, and then he got injured, and he came back, and he played a little bit of guard last year, you know, when you have a guard injury issue, but, uh, and he was still a little slow recovering from the injury, so he was having trouble, and he struggled, uh, but he seems to be recovering now, and he's playing pretty well on the right tackle side, so Florida State fans, what do you think about that, and most importantly, actually, what do you think about Rick Leonard being the starting left tackle? Do you think he has what it takes? Last year, he was the right tackle. And that's actually really interesting. That's a um, that's something in common that Florida State now has with Alabama. Because Alabama's starting left tackle, uh, who is now Jonah Williams, was our starting right tackle last year. Jonah Williams was probably uh, arguably the best true freshman on Alabama's team last year. He actually graded better in pass protection than Cam Robinson, who was a first-round uh, left tackle. Wait, was he first-round? I forgot. Was Cam Robinson? <laughs> I believe so. Either way, it doesn't matter. Cam Robinson was drafted uh, as one of the best tackles to go out for this year. And uh, and John Williams actually graded better than him. Uh, I don't know why I'm blanking on that, although it doesn't matter. They're not on the team anymore. Uh Anyway, moving on from the line. That's just going to be interesting. What do you Florida State fans think about Rick Leonard being the starting left tackle? Also, 
uh, the two freshman wide receivers, apparently they've been showing that stuff. Uh, and they're catching the attention of people. The coaches like them. Uh, I think Keith Gavin mentioned that guys, are, they're doing well, actually. They're still a little green. They said they're trying to learn you know, the offense, trying to make sure they, they know what to do. But the talent that they have is on display. Uh, they say DJ Matthews looked good during the wide receiver drills. They say he looks smooth when he's out there running. So apparently he's a good route runner. And they also say he looks bigger than his 160-pound frame, which is a good thing. Because if you're 160 pounds, it's very, very um, scary when you're about to get hit. But if he's like, if his body's like toned up, that's a good thing. But he was doing well before he got injured. He pulled his hamstring last year. And like I said, this is troubling. And maybe Florida State fans won't find it as troubling, but it will be. It's something to keep an eye on because, like I said, they only have six scholarship wide receivers right now. Um, I mean, pending uh, whatever they do with Devontae Phillips because I heard he was still practicing. I don't know. I don't have any way of verifying that. I think he's number five, though, and I think I saw number five on the footage of the practice. Who knows what they're going to do there, but he's suspended for now. So six six scholarship wide receivers, and DJ Matthews is one of those six, and he has a pulled hamstring, and so he's limited. He's practicing, he's limited. And pulled hamstring doesn't mean out for the year, but pulled hamstrings can linger if they don't heal right. And I don't want that to happen because I want Florida State to be at full strength when we play him. And I want them to have as many weapons as possible. But when you only have six receivers, depth becomes a problem. Because when you run a three-wide receiver set, you only have one guy to back up each position. And if one of those guys gets hurt, then now you're missing a backup. So this is really, really uh, interesting to see how this develops. So hopefully he, uh, they let him heal up. They don't push him too much. But they also have to push him a little bit because... He has to make sure he's up to speed with the offense for when the game starts. So that's something to keep an eye on. Florida State fans, what are you weigh in on that for me? Leave it in the comment section. Uh, also, uh, Tamarian Terry, who's the, the three-star wide receiver crew, the other guy, one of the six, um, he's been showing his stuff. He has a nice catch radius. He's one of the taller. He's a tall receiver. They brought him in for jump balls and whatnot. He has a nice catch radius, they say. He's been, like, catching some balls deep down the field and uh, – Kind of showing off a little bit. And honestly, they have no choice but to be ready to play. So they have to get these guys some reps, which is what they're trying to do. So this is going to be interesting to see what happens. I, I like keeping an eye on these things. Now, this was the defense. So I talked enough about that. I'm going into the defense now. This was the defense in the first week of fall camp. So uh, their, um, the depth chart, I guess you say, or like the starters. The starters, at least. We'll go with that. At least based on where they lined up in the first week of practice. And some of this is actually confirming what I thought, at least in terms of the corner. I know some of you were saying that, um, I can't remember the other guy, and the other corner, but he was going to be ahead of Levante Taylor. But apparently, Levante Taylor has been one of the starting corners during the first week of fall practice. And Tavares McFadden, of course, will be the boundary corner. And he's So those two are starting corners for sure. So Levante Taylor has taken a step ahead of the other guys like Fagan. Oh, and Fagan's hurt. That's uh, he's missing this week with the knee injury. So there's also something to keep an eye on. Although Florida State has tons of DBs apparently, so that shouldn't be too too much of a problem. Uh, but Fagan is hurt. But Levante Taylor's the starting corner, and Tavares Fagan is. Now at the at the defensive ends or the defensive line in general, Josh Sweat has moved to the Buck defensive end spot of the Florida State defense. And Brian Burns will move into the um, into the uh, I forgot the name of the other defensive end spot, but it's the one basically the one that he played last year as a backup. Uh, and he's now coming in, and he'll be the starting defensive end. I asked that question in the earlier video. Uh, what will they do in terms of rotation? And it seems like Brian Burns will be on the field with Josh Sweat, giving them a potent you know one-two combination on the uh, on the pass rush at the field at the same time. And, of course, I didn't talk about uh, Derek Nadi and Demarcus Christmas, who will be the defensive tackles. Uh, they, of course, will be starting looking to clog up the middle. Defensive line, like I said, they look good there. And here's the linebackers, who I'll do a video on. Uh, they have Jacob Pugh, who's at one outside linebacker spot. And they have Roderick Hoskins, who's at another outside linebacker spot. And middle linebacker is Matthew Thomas. I don't know much about these guys. I know about Jacob Pugh because he comes in and does some pass rushing from time to time. But I don't know much about Thomas or Hoskins, but I will when I do my video on them. Uh, but those seem to be the starting linebackers for now. I don't think much has changed there, I guess. 
Um, and of course, at safety, you free safety is Derwin James, and strong safety is Trey Marshall. So that looks to be the starting defensive lineup as of now, and will probably will be when the season starts. I don't know who will be Nickelback, Star, Dime, all that, but we'll see. Also, freshman uh, defensive end Trey Lawson uh, has been struggling in drills. They say, you know, he's a freshman; he has to catch on. So he doesn't look like he'll be one of the early contributors. Um, but he is there for depth, just in case something happens. Also, I saw a drill where Cam Akers was doing, like, the running back drill where you move your feet in between the bags. He has some fluid feet. He can really move them. So that looked cool. Uh, from what it looks like, he may just very well be, uh, I guess, really close to being a starter. Or him and Jock Patrick might, you know, be 1A, 1B. We'll see. Also, um, cornerback Ontario, Ontario Wilson. I didn't hear much about him when I was looking through the classes and whatnot, but apparently he's been making some noise at practice, or at least he's caught the eye of somebody as they're talking about him in the reports and whatnot. It'll be interesting to see how that develops. And and also, just one last thing, Brian Burns worked with the outside linebackers a little bit. He was seen with Jacob Pugh and, uh, and another outside linebacker um, as they were going through drills. So it'll be interesting to see if they try to line Burns up there. He is 6'5", 218. He actually is closer to a linebacker's body than he is a defensive end's body. So it'd be interesting to see if they maybe got some type of special package they may roll out. By the way, those are just some notes from the first week of uh, Florida State's practice. Uh, let me know what you guys think about some of that. And, uh, give me some of your predictions on the depth chart or what you think is going to happen with shipping around and who's going to play what. Thank you for paying attention. Uh, I'll continue to come back with more. See you for the next video.